Magic Treehouse number five, Night of the Ninjas, chapter three. Hey. Jack opened his eyes. Annie was already looking out the window. The mouse peeked out of her pouch. Jack looked out the window too. The air was fresh and cool. The treehouse was in a tree with white flowers. The tree was in a grove of trees on the side of the mountain. Nearby a wild stream nearby a wild stream rushed downhill. Two ninjas were sitting on rocks near the water. They were staring at the valley below. One ninja was tall and the other was short. They wore black pants and shirts. They had black scarves around their heads and swords strapped to their backs. It was exactly like the picture in the book. Jack crouched below the window. Be careful, he whispered. Don't let them see you. Why not, Aunt? Why not, Annie whispered back. They might think we're some kind of enemy, said Jack quietly. Annie crouched beside him. Jack pushed his glasses into place. Now he was going to look at the ninja book. He picked up the book. He turned to the beginning. He read, Very little is known about the shadowy warriors called ninjas. Historians believe that ninjas lived in Japan between the 14th and the 17th centuries. Both men and women were ninjas. Sometimes they fought to protect their families, and sometimes the warlords hired them to be spies. Wow, whispered Jack. We're in Japan, hundreds of years ago. Jack opened his backpack. He pulled out his notebook and pencil. He liked to take notes. He wrote, Ninjas are warriors in old Japan. Jack, whispered Annie. They're looking up. I think they know we're here. Jack peeked over the windowsill. His eyes met the dark eyes of the tall, of the tall ninja. Hee, the ninja cried. He dashed toward the tree. The other ninja followed. Oh no, said Annie. We've got to go, said Jack. Where's the Pennsylvania book? He and Annie looked around wildly, but there was... where, But where was the p book about Pennsylvania? It had the picture of Frog Creek and Woods in it. Jack and Annie could get, couldn't get home without it. It's not anywhere, cried Annie. We've got to do something fast, said Jack. Pull up the ladder. He and Annie grabbed the top of the rope ladder and they pulled the ladder into the treehouse, but the tall ninja leaped at the tree trunk and they started climbing up the tree. The short ninja followed. They climbed just like cats. Jack and Annie huddled in a corner. The ninjas climbed into the treehouse. Neither one made a sound. Chapter 4. Captured. The ninjas pulled iron bands off their hands. Bands had spikes like claws on them. That's how they climbed the tree, Annie whispered to Jack. The ninjas stared at Jack and Annie with dark, piercing eyes. The rest of their faces were covered by their scarves. Jack felt frozen under their stare. Annie wasn't frozen, though. She stepped right up to them. Hi, she said. The ninjas didn't say hi back. They didn't move at all. They were as still as Jack. We're trying to help our friend Morgan, said Annie. She help, held up Morgan's note. The tall ninja took the note from her. He looked at it and gave it to the short ninja. The two ninjas stared at each other. Then they took, looked back at Jack and Annie. Finally, the short ninja nodded once. He put the note into the pocket of his shirt. Can you help us? Annie asked. Neither ninja spoke. Jack wished he could see their faces. He couldn't tell what they were thinking. The short ninja tossed the rope ladder back out of the tree, and the tall one pointed down the ladder. Then he pointed at Jack and Annie. Uh-oh, thought Jack. Where, where the, were they being captured? Us? Go with you, said Annie. The ninja nodded. Oh, boy, said Annie. Oh, boy, is she nuts, wondered Jack. The short ninja darted down the ladder. He went hand over hand. His feet didn't touch the rungs of the ladder. The tall one did the same. Jack gasped. The ninjas moved very fast. They were like spiders dropping from webs. Wow, said Annie. Now's our chance to leave, said Jack. Quick. He looked around the treehouse again. Where was that Pennsylvania book? Let's go with them, Jack, said Annie. No, this isn't a game, Jack said. But I think they know something about Morgan, said Annie. She started down the ladder. Come back, said Jack. But it was too late. Jack sighed. Why does this always happen? He asked himself. Come on, Jack, came Annie's voice from below. 
Jack put his notebook in the ninja book and the ninja book into his pocket. He pushed his glasses into place and he started down the ladder. Jack joined Annie and the ninjas on the ground. The sun had fallen behind the hills. The sky was streaked with red and gold. The mouse peeked out from Annie's sweatshirt pouch. Don't be scared, Peanut, Annie whispered. We'll take care of you. Great, thought Jack, but who's going to take care of us? The short ninja held Jack's arm in one hand and Annie's arm in the other. He led them through the twilight. The tall ninja walked behind them. Where are we going? Jack asked. The ninja stopped near the rushing water of the wide stream. The water roared as it raced downhill. The short ninja looked at Jack and Annie. He let go of their arms, then he pushed them toward the stream. You want us to cross it? shouted Annie. The ninja nodded. Then he and the short ninja stepped into the wide, wild stream. They started wading across. Let's run back to the treehouse, said Jack. No, we have to follow them, said Annie, for Morgan's sake. Jack took a deep breath. She was right. Annie grabbed Jack's hand. Together they stepped into the water. Yikes, they both screamed and jumped out. It was the coldest water Jack had ever felt. It was colder than ice. It was so cold it felt like fire. I can't go back in, said Annie, shivering. Me neither, said Jack. I'll have a heart attack. The ninjas looked at Jack and Annie. Then they turned around and came back. The tall ninja grabbed Jack. Help, Jack cried. But the ninja lifted Jack high into the air and put him on his shoulder. The short ninja put Annie on his shoulders. Then the two ninjas stepped into the stream again. The icy wild waters swirled around them. It went up the short ninja's waist to the short ninja's waist. But the ninjas moved through the stream as calmly as two sailing ships. Chapter 5 Flames in the Mist The water grew shallow again. Then they were on dry land. The ninjas lowered Jack and Annie to the ground. Thanks, said Annie. Thanks, said Jack. Squeak, said the mouse. The ninjas said nothing, but they looked around. Jack looked around, too. A full moon was rising in the sky. Dark rocks dotted the side of the mountain. Then the ninjas started moving. They went swiftly up the slope between the rocks. Jack and Annie followed, followed them. Jack wasn't afraid of the ninjas now. In fact, he was starting to like them. Maybe they really could help find Morgan. The ninjas moved silently, but Jack and Annie made plenty of noise. They panted as they climbed the rocky hillside. Their wet sneakers made squishy sounds. Suddenly, the ninjas froze. Jack could see their eyes darting around. Voices were coming from the valley below. Jack saw torches flaming in the midst. The ninjas started moving faster. Jack and Annie hurried after them. Who's carrying the torches, Annie asked. Jack was too out of breath to speak. He also didn't have an answer. They came to a pine forest. Night birds called out. Wind rattled the branches. The ninjas moved like ghosts through the forest. They appeared and disappeared through moonlight and shadows. Jack and Annie struggled to keep up. Finally, the ninjas came to a stop. One ninja held out his hand as if to say, wait. Then both ninjas stepped away into the shadows of the tree and were gone. Where did they go, said Annie. I don't know, said Jack. Maybe the book can tell us. He pulled a ninja book out of his pack. He turned the pages until he came to a picture of a cave. But the light of the full, by the light of the full moon he read, Sometimes ninjas held meetings in hidden mountain caves to plan secret missions. Oh, man, said Jack. I bet they went inside a hidden cave. He pulled out his notebook and pencils and wrote, Meetings in Hidden Caves. Jack turned the page. He stared at a picture of a ninja sitting on a mat. He read, Ninjas took orders from a ninja master. The master was a mysterious wise person who knew many secrets of nature. Wow, whispered Jack. Just then the two ninjas returned. Jack quickly put his books away. The short ninja motioned for Jack and Annie to follow. In the shadows was the entrance of the dark cave. What's in there? Annie whispered. The, the ninja master, Jack whispered back. Chapter 6 Shadow Warrior Jack and Annie went into the cave. They followed the ninja through the darkness. The
The black of the cave was lit with dozens of candles. Shadows danced on the walls. In the flickering light, Jack saw a dark figure sitting on a woven mat. The ninja master. The ninja bowed to the master, then he stepped to one side. The master stared at Jack and Annie. Sit, he said. Jack and Annie sat on the cold, hard floor. Squeak! The mouse poked its head out of Annie's pouch. It's okay, Peanut, said Annie. The master stared at the mouse for a moment. Then he looked at Jack. Who are you? he asked. I'm Jack, and that's my sister Annie, Jack answered back. Where do you come from? the master asked. Frog Creek, Pennsylvania, Annie answered. Why are you here? he asked. We're trying to help our friend Morgan he Lefle, said Jack. She left us a message. Annie pointed to the short ninja. We gave the message to him. You mean you gave the message to her, said the ninja master, and she has given it to me. She, said Jack and Annie together. The woman ninja eyes sparkled. Jack thought she might be smiling. The master held up Morgan's note. Perhaps I can help you, he said, but first you must prove yourselves worthy of my help. Just then the tall ninja appeared. He made a sign to the master. The master stood up. He handed Morgan's note to Annie. We must go now, he said. The samurai are close. Samurai? said Jack. He knew that the samurai were fierce Japanese fighters. Were they the ones in the valley? Jack asked. The ones with the torches? Yes. Our family is at war with them, said the master. We must leave before they find us. But what about helping Morgan, said Annie. The master strapped on his sword. I have no time now, he said. I must go. Can we go with you? said Annie. No, there is no place for you where we are going. You must find your way back to your house in the trees. Alone? said Jack. Yes, you must go alone and beware of the samurai. Why? said Jack. They will think you are one of us, said the master. They will ask you no questions and they will show you no mercy. Yikes, whispered Annie. But you have seen the way of the ninja. You can practice it yourselves now, said the master. How? said Jack. Remember three things, said the master. What? said Jack. Use nature, be nature, follow nature. I can do that, Annie said. Jack looked at her. You can? he said. The master turned to Jack. Your tree house lies to the east. That is the way you must go. How? wondered Jack. How do we find the east? Before he could ask, the master bowed. Then he disappeared into the shadows. The two ninjas led Jack and Annie out of the cave into the moonlight. The tall one pointed at the pine forest. Then they too disappeared in the darkness. Jack and Annie were all alone.